Today we're going to look at a pretty nice integral and what I think makes it nice is it involves a logarithm and an exponential function but they're not built in a way so that one can cancel the other. So to be precise we have the natural log of 1 minus e to the minus x as the integrand. So observe that if that one wasn't there, then definitely we could use the fact that the logarithm and the exponential function are inverses and get a lot of simplification. But this slight deformation, if you will, of that you know, nice case is what I think makes this integral stand out. Okay, so how are we gonna approach this? Well, we're gonna use one of my favorite methods which is to rewrite this as a double integral and then go from there. So in fact, I wanna view this as the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of one minus y times e to the minus x, where I'm evaluating that from y equals zero up to y equals one and then dx. Okay, nice. So let's observe here that if we evaluate this at y equals zero, I have the natural log of one, which is zero. Evaluating it at y equals one gives us what we started with. And what we wanna do is think about this inside bit, this natural log of all the way up to the evaluation as what I like to call a zeroth integral. So evaluation at two points can be thought of as a zeroth integral. And then we can change that to a first integral via the fundamental theorem of calculus. In other words, we take the derivative of this function with respect to y and then introduce an integral from y equals zero to y equals one. Okay, so let's do that. So here we have the integral from zero up to infinity and then the integral from zero up to one of well, let's be careful about this derivative with respect to y. We know that we're gonna have that argument of the natural log in the denominator, but now we've gotta take that argument's derivative with respect to y, but that's pretty clearly gonna give us minus e to the minus x, and then here we have dy dx. So we've got something that looks like this. So next up, I'm gonna observe that in my region of integration, if in kind of the worrisome places like the infinity and the zeros as necessary, we change this into a limit of proper integrals instead of improper integrals, but doing that kind of in the background will allow me to apply Fubini's theorem, which means I can switch the order of integration. So let's do that and I'm gonna simultaneously bring a minus sign out front. So I've got minus the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to infinity, and now I have e to the minus x over one minus e to the minus x. Now it's dx dy. But now what I'd like to do, oh, actually, as I'm thinking about it a little bit more carefully, I'm actually not gonna bring that minus sign out. I'm gonna leave it inside, as we'll see with our next Step, which is a nice substitution. And what I'd like to observe at this point is if I introduce a new variable, which perhaps we'll call t, and set t equal to e to the minus x, we'll see that dt is equal to minus e to the minus x dx. So observe that that's gonna take care of this bit right here, which is in the numerator. That's like my dt component. And then I've got this uh, function right here in the denominator, which is t. Okay, but what about the bounds of integration? Well, let's notice as x approaches zero, we'll see that t is approaching the number one because e to the zero is one. And then as x is approaching infinity, we'll see that t is approaching zero because we've got exponential decay here. Okay, so now I've got the integral from zero to one and then the integral from one to zero of one over one minus t times y dt dy. So dt is first, dy is second. 
But now what I'll do next is rewrite this as an integral from zero to one instead of an integral from one to zero. I can do that by introducing a minus sign. So here we have this is minus the integral from zero to one of the integral from zero to one of one minus or one over one minus t times y d t dy. Although at this point, the order of integration doesn't matter because well, the bounds of integration are the same. Okay, so at this stage, what we'll do is expand that denominator using a geometric series. So that's gonna give us minus, the sum is n goes from zero up to infinity. Now we have the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to one of t to the n times y to the n, and then dt dy. And of course, well, it's really t times y raised to the n power, uh, but we can distribute that um, exponent through. And I guess like just to be really thorough here, we're using the fact that one over one minus, let's use a dummy variable of u, is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of u to the n. Okay. But now let's observe that this double integral right here is in fact simply a product of two single integrals. So let's use that. So this is minus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the integral from zero to one of t to the n dt times the integral from zero to one of y to the n dy. But next up, those antiderivatives and evaluations are very, very simple to do. And you'll see we get minus the integral, or sorry, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over n plus one quantity squared. But I guess like at this point, something to make this look a little bit more familiar would be to do an index change. So replace all the n's with n minus ones, and that's gonna change my starting point from zero to one. So I have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. But of course, that's a very famous sum you know, related to something called the Basel problem. And in fact, I've evaluated this sum a number of different ways on the channel already. You can check those out if you're psyched. But what we end up with is the famous value of pi squared over six. But since this is attached to a minus sign, that means the value of our original integral right here is in fact negative pi squared over six.